The tech industry is changing fast. Tools are evolving, AI is transforming workflows, and job descriptions are shifting. But if there's one skill that has stayed constant throughout the years, it is SQL. Whether you are pivoting into data, trying to land your first analyst role, or looking to level up in your current job, stick around because I show you exactly what you need to learn. SQL is the language that powers every single database. Whether you work in finance, tech, healthcare, marketing, Anywhere there's data, there's going to be SQL. Learn it well once and you'll use it through the entire rest of your career. Even if you don't work directly in a data role, but you work in a data-driven company, whether that's in marketing, product management, UX design, or even customer success, knowing SQL will make you stand out. It shows initiative, helps you self-serve insights, and honestly makes cross-functional collaboration so much easier. So firstly, what is SQL? SQL stands for Structured Query Language, and it is a programming language that allows you to communicate with relational databases, basically tables made up of rows and columns. Think of it like English, but instead of talking to a person, you are talking to a database and asking it for information. And once you get the hang of it, SQL becomes the fastest way to generate any insights from data. And before we jump straight into what you need to learn, let's talk about where to write and test our SQL code. SQL is used across many systems like Postgres, MySQL, BigQuery, and Spark SQL. And while the fundamentals are the same, each has its own flavor of syntax. Think about it like American versus British English. And if you were just getting started, here are a couple of recommendations. You can use Jupyter Notebooks with an extension, try an online playground or something like Microsoft Azure Data Studio, or even download a desktop client like Datagrip for a full featured SQL IDE. Don't overthink it, just pick the one that gets you writing SQL the fastest. Moving on, let's now break down the two types of commands that you'll be using in SQL the most. Firstly, there is the data definition layer or DDL, which includes commands like create, alter, drop, and truncate, which are commonly used to define or modify the structure of your tables. Then there is the data manipulation layer or DML, where analysts and data scientists spend the vast majority of their time. All right, let's start with the absolute basics, how to retrieve and filter data, which at its core is what SQL is all about. You're basically asking questions and the database is giving you answers. So before anything else, you need to get comfortable with select, from, and where, which forms the foundation of almost every single SQL query. Also learn your logical filters like and, or, between, in, and like, as well as your order by statement. Mastering the basics is super important as these will show up in almost every query that you write. And once you're comfortable selecting and filtering data, the next step to master is joins, because most databases are not just one giant table, each holding different pieces of related information. And joins let you combine these tables together based on shared columns. Start with learning your inner joins and your left joins. These are the most common ones. And then move on to right join and outer joins. Make sure you understand the difference between all these four types of joins. And now that we know joins let us combine columns together, what about combining rows? This is where set operations come in. Understand the difference between union and union all. This helps you combine your results vertically. I'd also recommend learning the intersect and accept operators to compare queries and filter between overlaps. And once you're comfortable with joining tables, it's now time to summarize and group data for analysis. Focus on your aggregations, your count, sum, average, min, and max, grouping data with group by, filtering results using the having clause, and also conditional logic to create categories with the case when statement. Now, this is where you start turning raw data into actual insights and metrics, perfect for business reporting, building dashboards, or even constructing a data science model. Next, it's time to apply transformations to our data. Here is where we clean, reshape, and standardize our columns to make sure our data is actually usable for our analysis. Focus on understanding why the nulls exist, how to handle them using is null, is not null, and coalesce, extracting parts of dates, working with strings, type casting to change data types, and learn the difference between float, character, and decimals, creating flags with case when, and also how to round numbers, as these transformations are essential when preparing data for analysis. Now, at this point in your SQL journey, you've probably realized that watching tutorials is one thing, but doing hands-on practice is where the real growth actually happens. And that is why I am really excited to be partnering with DataCamp for today's video. I have actually been using DataCamp for more than five years now, and if you scroll back to some of my earliest videos up on my channel almost four years ago, you will see that I was already using DataCamp to upskill. 
What I've always appreciated is how interactive and polished their platform actually is, way beyond just watching videos and consuming information. You get to apply what you learned immediately with hands-on exercises and real-time feedback that helps you learn so much faster. They contain hundreds of courses across Python, machine learning, data engineering, R, and if you're looking to upskill your SQL, I highly recommend checking out their SQL Associate Certification Program, which is a structured learning path that walks you through everything from the fundamentals to advanced SQL topics and even interview prep. Plus, the certification at the end is industry recognized and a great addition to your LinkedIn or your resume. Whether you are just starting out or already working in tech, Data Camp has something for every level, and they're constantly updating and adding a new content to stay relevant and ahead of the curve. I highly, highly recommend checking out Data Camp. I will have its link in the description box below. And honestly, if you are someone who learns by doing and by practicing, I couldn't recommend them more. Thank you again to Data Camp for sponsoring this portion of the video. And let's now move on to some more advanced techniques and talk about subqueries. Subqueries let you solve layered logic problems by embedding one query inside another and you'll often use them to filter based on results of another table. Subqueries are very powerful, but they can be hard to follow and they are very slow at scale. So make sure you understand what they actually do, when to use them, and when to move on to something a little bit more scalable, like CTEs that we're gonna cover off now. So CTEs, which stand for Common Table Expressions, are basically like named subqueries that sit at the very top of your query, making your SQL code much more readable. You can use them with the with clause and they let you structure your query into clean, logical steps, almost like defining variables in your code at the very start. CTEs are perfect for breaking down your complex queries into different steps, reusing your logic, and also making your code much easier to read, write, and debug. And it's also less computationally intensive. Now moving on, this next section is a key milestone in your SQL learning journey, especially if you're preparing for interviews or working with real world datasets you need to learn window functions. These show up all the time in reporting and time series analysis and let you calculate values across rows. I'll put some key ones to focus on up on the screen right now. And obviously you do not have to remember the syntax of these word for word, but knowing when to use these will take your SQL to the next level. And once you're confident writing clean SQL queries, the next level is to understand how to optimize and scale your code especially when working with very large data sets or in an actual production environment in your company. Some key topics to focus on include creating views, temporary tables, stored procedures, triggers, and indexes. And these are especially useful for data engineers or anyone working with production code. And just like coding, SQL needs a portfolio as well. Use ChatGPT to simulate you some data and practice writing SQL queries. Document your projects, show how you approach the problem, what queries you use and what insights you found. Upload all your queries into a GitHub repository and write a short summary in the README document or even on Notion. Trust me, a portfolio goes a really long way when applying for roles. If you have another 10 minutes to spare, I highly recommend you checking out this video up on the screen right now, which is my 10 minute crash course of everything you need to learn in SQL, as well as some tips and tricks that I have consolidated over the past 10 years of working with SQL. I hope today's video helped and all the best with your SQL learning journey. I'll see you in my next one. Bye.